Best of r slash malicious compliance episode 132. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. Company policy costs company a lot. In 1979, my dad's company transferred him to Mexico City from Toronto. We flew down in early December and moved into a hotel. Good hotel in the city. Our furniture was supposed to arrive in a week or so, and then we would move into the house that the company was renting for us. It did. Except we found out that it was going to be stuck in customs for an indeterminate amount of time. My dad asked his company if they would let him expend some basic living gear for the house. Cookware, plates, a few beds, just enough to get us out of the hotel and into the house. The company said no. Policy was that we were to be in a hotel until the furniture arrived, not to buy us furniture or housewares. My dad noted that the policy didn't say what hotel we had to stay in. So we moved out of the individual rooms of the hotel we were in, and moved into one of the presidential suites at a 5 star hotel Hotel Camino Real. We had two floors, and a private swimming pool. The hotel put a Christmas tree in our living room. In 1979, the suite was around $400 slash day. I have no idea what it is in today's money. We ate out at really nice restaurants. We got tired of steak and lobster. In all. We were in the hotel for 39 days, before we got our belongings out of customs. The hotel bill was somewhere around 14 k dollars. My dad said that they changed the policy after that. Thank you, next. Your wish is my command, boss. I used to work at a bakery for a lady who I am still friends with although she used to occasionally become unreasonable and yell at her employees. You know that employee at your job who works super hard and isn't really recognized for it or paid well enough? You know, the sort of person who would rather do a task to get it done right even if it's someone else's job. Well, that person at the bakery was me. I was the opening supervisor which just meant that I had to keep everyone on track until my boss got there at 6 or 7 am and my co-worker who was with me in the early mornings was not super good at her job to say the least. This resulted in me doing all of my work and roughly 30% of her work. I had told my boss this but she had not addressed my co-worker yet, and one busy day we were slammed. I mean we usually made 2 or 3 dozen cinnamon rolls a day but this day we made 24 and sold them all. As a result we were behind with several tasks despite our best efforts when my boss came and she ripped into us about not getting everything done. I tried to explain how busy we had been but she interrupted me and said, if everyone would just do their jobs it would be fine. Oh you think so? Very well. Boss. Your wish is my command. The next insanely busy day I bustled around doing my job. Just my job. All the things my less competent co-worker was struggling with I let her figure out and when our boss got in she was furious. I calmly went about my work while she dumbfoundedly pitched in and tried to do damage control. She was pitching quietly to her daughter about the state of everything and why I didn't do more when her daughter, bless her, said, Mum, Op actually did all of her tasks. It's co-worker who struggled today and my boss eventually conceded that perhaps more training was in order. Thanks for reading. Thank you. Next. Demand we have a meeting for this? Okay. I once had a project manager named Shirley and a co-worker named Alex. I was a computer programmer. Every morning we along with half a dozen other people, had a 5 minute long meeting to discuss our progress and give people a chance to ask each other stuff. The boss was away on a 2 week vacation, and while he was away the meetings were slightly more important so we could coordinate ourselves without him to do it. Right before the meeting I had come to a roadblock because I could remember what something in the programming was called, I just needed an actual word and I could continue, and I knew Alex would know it. At the meeting Alex did his thing. A few other people talked, then it was my turn. I explained what I had done yesterday and what I was working on and said hey Alex, do you remember? At this point Shirley interrupted and threw a screaming fit at me. How dare I try to have a discussion with someone without her. I pointed out that she was standing right there, and she demanded to know how dare I try to talk to someone without it being a scheduled meeting in the conference room in her presence. I pointed out that this was a scheduled meeting. We were in the conference room, and we were in her presence. How dare I presume to ask anyone anything without notifying her in advance that I would be doing so. I tried to explain that it was only a very brief question, and she flipped out that how dare I try to talk back to her about this. So, having gotten an idea, 
I asked when we could have this meeting. She said 3 p.m. I knew damned well she had nothing to do before then. She just wanted to have something she could feel smug about. It was 9.34 a.m. at the time. She ordered that I was not to discuss it with anyone before the meeting and I was not to proceed on the task without it or I'd just be proving it wasn't actually important and I was wasting anyone's time. The meeting ended and we left. Alex worked about 10 feet away from me, so I could have just walked over and asked him, but I didn't. He sent me an instant message to know if I wanted to ask him whatever while she couldn't hear, and I replied that no. She wanted to be rude about it so she could reap the rewards of her actions. Alex and I had lunch every day, but I declined to talk about it. He knew I was up to something. At 3pm he and I went into the conference room. 10 minutes later she swanned in, closed the door, sat down, opened her notebook, uncapped her pen, wrote down the date and time and who was there, and told me I was now authorized to proceed. Hey Alex, do you remember last week when we did? Tusk? You used a thingy that did. Thing. What was it called? He told me. Great. Thanks. And he and I both turned to leave. It had taken all of about 20 seconds. Shirley flew into a rage. I was deliberately making a mockery of her by scheduling a beating for something that would take 20 seconds. As I left the room I said Shirley. I warned you that this was a one minute exchange. But you insisted on a meeting. She didn't speak to me for the rest of the day. I made sure my timesheet reflected that I spent 9.35 to 3 p.m. doing nothing slash waiting for Shirley. A day or two later she flew into a rage at me again, and the entire staff was so enraged they told me they were quitting and asked me to join them. I asked them to wait a couple days, called my boss and told him, and on the next business day I found he had returned early from his vacation and fired her. Thank you. Next. Reason required to move out. Hello. This happened a long time ago. I was young and had just come back from traveling in Europe. I wound up renting an apartment that I was not happy with, but it was in my hometown, and was affordable. I was hoping to move out, and was able to do so once a better opportunity came along. The apartment was generally depressing, so I was looking forward to moving out. I talked to the landlord and building manager about moving out, and to see if I could move out mid-month to save on some rent. They said that was not possible, and I would have to wait until the end of the month to move out. Fine not a big problem. The building manager says I need to fill out some forms before I can move out, so I go to his office and do so. He was not a very friendly guy, but honestly I had not had any interactions with him prior to this, and had no hard feelings about him. One of the questions on the form was why are you moving out? I left it blank. What business is it of anyone's why I am moving out? The building manager handed me back the form and said you have to fill this in. I told him that I didn't feel like giving a reason that I am moving out, and didn't understand why it was mandatory. He insisted that I had to fill it in or he would not process my move out paperwork to end the month to month lease. I said okay fine, and filled in I do not like the building manager. He was shocked when he read it. I told him I didn't want to put anything down. But rules are rules. Thank you. Next. Must find the reservation? Okay. Last week me and my friend went out to eat for the first time in 3 plus months. There was a short line before being seated. Just one other couple before us. The man insisted that he had a reservation. But the waitress couldn't find his name in her tablet and immediately he got loud and angry. The waitress suggested that maybe the man had called the wrong number. Because there is another restaurant 50 kilometers from here with the same name and sometimes people mix up the two of them when doing a Google search. She was very polite and calm about it, but the man got even angrier and accused her of trying to shift the blame, said she couldn't do her job, blah blah. The waitress tried to say that they still had some open tables and if he could wait a moment she would go and check, but the man kept speaking loudly over her and saying that she must find his reservation. So eventually the waitress called the owner, and the owner took the man and his companion to one side so they wouldn't block the line while she tried to figure out what was going on. Now, me and my friend didn't have a reservation either, because I'm a total scatterbrain and I forgot to call ahead. I told the waitress as much and asked if there was any chance they'd be able to fit us in. She told me not to worry, there were still tables available, and we were seated within a minute. Our table was not near the entrance so we didn't see what happened next, 
but the same waitress brought us our coffees at the end of dinner so we asked her if everything was okay. Me and my friend had been talking about it and we were appalled at the man's behavior. The waitress told us not to worry, that the owner had let him stew for a bit and then she'd called the other restaurant with the same name. The manager of that other restaurant had confirmed they had a reservation under his name. The man was very annoyed at being proved wrong and asked to be seated since they had been waiting a long time. The owner said that unfortunately all tables were full. Man, but earlier you had empty tables. I saw it. Owner, yes, but you told the staff you didn't want to be seated. You wanted us to find your reservation. We have found your reservation. It's for a restaurant in another city. In the meantime, other people have come in and all the tables are full. We have no seats left. The man didn't take it well, but the bartender. A huge giant of a man, was standing nearby so he scampered off in rage, swearing he was never coming back. I think everyone in that restaurant will be happy if he keeps that promise. Thank you. Next. Turned an unrequired signature into a work of art. A few years ago I was in a job that provided me with a work vehicle and fuel card. I was always pretty busy in this role, so refueling was often and time consuming in the scheme of things. The fuel card stated clearly on the reverse side signature not required. One day the guy serving me asked me to sign. I advised him that a signature wasn't required for this card. For some unknown reason he found it essential to insist. Rather than argue, I signed a quick dick and balls, looked up at his dumbfounded expression with a smirk and walked out. This then became my go-to scribe when asked to sign rather than waste time explaining it wasn't required. I don't know if our finance department ever saw it, but I always hope someone with a sense of humor spotted it. Thank you. Next. Foreman and the way. About 5 years ago I was working as an assembler in a cabinet shop. I would take parts cut on a CNC and put them together for shipping. Occasionally there would be questions as to how those parts were intended to fit or there was an error with the part itself. No problem. The designers were through a door 10 feet away from my workstation and I could ask a quick question and be back to work within a few minutes. My shop foreman, however, wanted all information to flow through him. On paper, this seems reasonable as he just wanted to know exactly what was happening on the shop floor. Practically, it was a dumb idea. If an issue occurred, I would have to go hunt him down and wait if he was busy. Then, I would have to explain the issue. If it was a design conflict I would have to run through 5-10 minutes of explanation just so he'd understand what was wrong, then another 5 explaining what I needed him to ask the designers. Usually, I would circumvent him and just ask my question, but I was eventually reprimanded. Cue the MC. If I had an issue, I'd immediately note the time on my time card and go looking for the foreman, run through the whole shebang and then, sit down on my bench and wait. I would do absolutely nothing while waiting for him to try and translate my issue and then understand the explanation. He would come back, irritated and ask why I'm sitting around and I'd just say, well, I needed that question answered before I could move on. I didn't want to clear my workstation off just to spend 5 minutes on something else, that would be a waste of time. Once I was back on track I'd fall in the downtime on my time card. For your information. Employers don't like seeing chunks of a workday allotted to waiting for an answer. This is especially true when the majority of the answers he came back with made no sense and he'd send me forward to ask myself, anyways. In the end, they just asked us to keep him in the loop after getting our issues sorted and to deal with the asking ourselves.